So I'm currently behind the wheel of the 2023 Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison, and I'm gonna take some time to go through the interior of this thing. So starting as I normally do from left to right, over on the left, you got your window switches, you got your rear mirror just right here. You can see the Bose speakers on the door. I will showcase that better on the passenger side door. Up top, you got your door latch, door locks. You got different presets you can set for the driver's seating position. To the right of that, you've got your parking brake button. To the right of that, you have your different buttons for the different four wheel drive modes. So there's an auto mode, a two high, a four high, and a four low. Um, every auto, two high, and four uh, high, you can just push them, um, no extra um, help needed. On uh, four low, you have to put the vehicle in neutral and then you can put it in four low. Below that, you have a little toggle that says mode. Toggling it left and right will change between different drive modes of vehicle. So all the way over on the left, you got normal. In the center, you have off-road. And all, all the way on the right, it says terrain. Now terrain, it says you need at least four high minimum for the uh, terrain modes. So I'm just gonna put it in normal for my purposes. And below that, you have a trailer mode as well. So pushing that will change one gauge right here um, for the temperature. So I'm going to push it. And you can see it kind of lets you know if you're overheating. And also change the icon like right about there. To the right of that, you have different lighting buttons as well. Um, you got a light for the rear bed some dim level um, gauge cluster adjustment lights. So obviously down and up, you can bright and lower, as well as some normal headlight options down low as well. These three buttons right here have to do with the heads up display. So this HUD with the arrows button will, you can kind of see it coming through in a video, make it go up, make it go down. Info button changes what you will see on that. So I'm just gonna cycle through. It's not gonna come through so crisp and clear but there's pretty much three options. I pretty much leave it on uh, this screen showcasing a different angle, which is also currently sitting on the gauge cluster as well. And then the last button is the uh, brightness level of that heads up display. Moving to the gauge cluster, it is a full uh, digital display. In the center, everything can be adjusted to a different page that you like. So um, you have five pages, so starting from the left, you've got an info page, uh, whatever you're listening to, a compass. Your navigation will also display here should you have a path, a phone, currently not connected, well I am, but for Android Auto. And you can uh, adjust the settings for the gauge cluster as well, customize it. So for the purposes, I'm gonna start on the info screen all the way at the top. So starting at the top is the uh, speedometer, Drive summary, trip one, trip two, timer, tire pressures for all four corners, fuel economy, driver assistance, oil life, brake pad life, air filter life, trail, trailer brake, and the off-road uh, gauges that I showed showcasing the angles of the vehicle, currently I'm at a standstill, engine hours, transmission fluid, and a blank page should you want nothing. And then you can also edit those as well. But like I said, I kind of have been leaving it on this screen for uh, my driving experience. Over on the left, there is the traditional tack, I mean, a speedometer. And over on the right is the tack, as well as a compass in the center, which is the current settings of it. Uh, you got a bunch of gauges at the bottom, temperature, fuel gauge, the remaining range you have, battery gauge, and another temp gauge. Moving to the steering wheel. So on the um, back of it, you can see these um, paddles, so you can shift your own gear should you like. And lower than that, the paddle pretty much stops where my two fingers are. Below that, on both sides, there are four buttons. So over on the left, it's the tuner button for up and down should you want to cycle through stations or songs. Over on the left, behind this paddle or below this paddle is the volume controls up and down. How is adjusting all of the gauge cluster features is over here. So you have left and right is actual buttons and then up and down is a scroll. Talk buttons, phone, um, heated steering wheel over on the left, your cruise control options as well. Um, some collision warning systems as well. Give you a better look at the steering wheel. 
the right of the steering wheel and tucked down is the engine start stop button. And then you have the full digital navigation display. So this is the home screen. So you got home, you can push it, the manual button as well as right here. There are different presets on the left side will pop you in certain uh, app bubbles as I call them quicker. So obviously this little, literally a bubble is the Google Assistant. This one is for the trailering, that one, phone, maps, and the audio you listen to. But additionally to that, you got cameras you can utilize while you're driving or at a standstill or off-roading. So this is one view, this vehicle behind me, bed views, front, tire views, real good for off-roading, hitch view basically, but you can utilize those as you see fit. There's your Play Store, Android Auto, I've been utilizing, I use an Android phone, trailing, climate settings, you can pretty much change everything you like. Wi-Fi hotspot, Amazon Alexa, my Chevrolet, the app store uh, for Chevrolet, kind of linking you to your car. I don't have uh, the app set up because I'm not an owner of this vehicle. This is a press loaner, but you can sign in should you create, you know, service schedule of your plans, things like that. Podcasts and Google News. So I've, like I said, I've been living pretty much on Android Auto, but there are other options. Over here, you got some customized screens as well. Below that, you've got a row of buttons. So you have your lane assist, you got some parking sensors. This is the engine auto start stop, currently have it off. You've got a rear bed button, which can lift it, or actually, sorry, drop it. Um, hazard button, trash control off, hill uh, ascent options. You got a rear locker, as well as you can lock uh, both the front and the rear. Utilize, it's a pretty cool option. Pretty sure um, that that's kind of special to Chevrolet and their uh, ZR2 models. It's pretty much an uh, industry uh, bonus, I guess you could say. Also, I don't know if I touched on the volume knob when I was going to uh, talking about the home buttons, but volume knob and power button for your audio as well. Coming down from there, you got your trailer brake um, options over here, and then you got your all, all your HVAC controls to the right of that. So you got heated and ventilated seats for both the driver and the passenger as well as all your normal HVAC controls displayed uh, digitally, temperature in the center of the knobs. Over on the right, you've got a old USB plug as well as a USB-C uh, plug right there, should you want to plug in. Then you've got cubby space galore. So you got a big uh, tray right here. You got a center one as well, currently holding the gimbal um, at the bottom based on my gimbal. These are kind of removable as well, should you want to clean them. Space right here two cup holders and then you got your gear lever right here so you got reverse neutral drive and l and l is just the low gear so um, you can just kind of knock it in drive and then knock it in l and just switch between the two you also have parking brake button as well and you've got your armrest so right here there's actually a charging pad which i will reveal push this button you got your charging pad right here you got a bunch of trays i'm going to remove this for a second showcase in here so you've got an old normal home plug right here, old USB, USB-C. Uh, this is pretty deep. I would say without the tray, you could probably fit two uh, two liters and maybe, maybe a third if you squeeze them in here. It's so deep that you can see this is actually a light right here um, to showcase what you're uh, grabbing at in here, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna put this back. So yeah, your tray, you can organize how you wish. Going to the passenger side, you got a glove box down low. Push this button right here, reveals a nice hidden spot as well. There's a Bose speaker that I was showcasing sprinkled through the cabin. Give you a better look at the passenger door. Feature The seats feature uh, American Expedition Vehicle branding, which they put all the kind of off-road pieces on the exterior of the vehicle, but I'm focusing on the interior for this video. Give you a better look at the seating design currently housing my in my toddler's uh, car seat but that same design as you can see goes to the rear no sunroof in this vehicle but you got lighting buttons up top one star sos and all that
that's pretty much the interior of the 2023 Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison. If there is some detail on the interior I didn't go in depth enough on or you have some questions about a button, uh, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I've started noticing since doing this for a few years that often you guys don't have questions uh, when these are new. You have questions when these are uh, two, three years down the line and you're just looking for uh, trying to get a used vehicle. So uh, don't hesitate to drop a question if you see this video is actually two or three years old because I'm starting to see where I'm actually more helpful to some used a uh, few potential car owners or truck owners than actual new ones. So be sure to any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.